Hi folks, Chris Martin here. One of the most difficult calculations to make in diplomacy is when to stab. What is it that makes a stab worthwhile? Today, I'm going to look at valuing stabs. When should you put that knife in their back? And when should you wait for a better opportunity? If you make an excellent stab, you reap tremendous rewards in the game. Not only that, but you can be recognized by your peers if you're at a face-to-face -face tournament. The Golden Blade Award at face-to-face -face tournaments can be something as simple as a letter opener, very classic Golden Blade Award from DixieCon, to the slightly more ridiculous, have fun flying home from your tournament with this, or can be really over the top and they just go out and get a really nice piece of hardware to recognize the best stab of the weekend. As a bonus, if you get to be good at assessing the value of stabs, you'll know when you are likely to be stabbed so you can take steps to prevent it. There are really no hard and fast rules for what makes a good stab, but I think there are some pretty solid guidelines that you can use to make these decisions. Let me put a stake in the ground and say that there are four kinds of stabs. There are many, many kinds of stabs, but let's break it down into four categories so we have something we can talk about. The first kind of stab is an awful stab. This is a stab that actively harms you. Your position is worse after you executed the stab than beforehand. You get nothing or lose ground, and uh, it just is a terrible, terrible decision. Second is a weak stab. You get the knife in, but it doesn't really help. It wasn't a killing blow, and your position in the game isn't really improved. You may have hurt both yours and your allies' game and helped the people on the other side of the board. An effective stab changes the board dynamic in your favor. It gets the job done. It may not kill the person that you're fighting outright, and you may still have a hard fight on your hands, but you've definitely improved your position by changing the course of the game. And then finally, the best kind of stab there is, is a brutal stab, in which your target finds himself with no defense, no response, you've flipped the board and markedly improved your chances of outright winning the game. That's the best kind of stab. When I'm negotiating with a new player, somebody I don't know very well in a game, one of the first things I will tell them very early on in the game as we start to work together is, don't leave me three dots or two dots and position, and you will never have to worry about me stabbing you. That's my threshold in a game. Uh, as somebody who's been playing for a long time, I trust that if I have an ally that I'm working with, that I am going to be able to do well on my own, and I'm not going to need to stab them in order to advance my game. Now, that's not always the case moving forward, but that's always where I'm starting from. And I think it's a good rule of thumb that you don't want to make weak stabs, and you don't want to make awful stabs. You want, at the very least, your stabs to be effective at flipping the board in your favor. But that makes stabs exceedingly hard to model. You take a, a, a stab on a board that seems really good in the moment, but it turns out that it changes the board dynamic, and despite the change of dots that happens in that season, the long-term effect is that your game ends up going backwards. And in the same way, you can look at a stab that looks really bad in the moment, but in hindsight, seven, eight moves later, turns out to have been the pivotal moment when the game turned around and suddenly now this player who made that apparently awful stab is now rolling towards their victory. Very, very difficult to take a static board position or even one season of movement and say, oh, good stab, or oh, bad stab. That being said, there are a couple of things that we can definitively say. It almost goes without saying that a zero dot stab 
or a stab in which you lose centers is almost always going to be an awful stab. The most common time when this happens is if you are on the front lines of a multi-party battle, right? You've got some sort of two-on-two -two fight going, and you try to sneakily stab your ally in the back line. But unfortunately, the order set you've submitted on the front line results in you losing more centers than you gain. Uh, sometimes combined with your ally gaining more centers than you take. There's nothing quite as frustrating as stabbing someone and watching them build two while you remove. That's an awful feeling. Don't do that. A one-dot stab is rarely better. Uh, it's obviously better to get a dot than to lose centers or get nothing, but taking one center off of somebody who you have been working with, um, crushing the momentum of your alliance moving forward, and having them turn around and fight you is very rarely the correct decision. You have to really have the rest of the board with you on the stab. You have to be in position to take more than the one dot you got in the stab. And you've got to make sure that the execution going forward favors you. And that's a lot of risk to hang on one center. No matter what that center is, it's rarely going to cripple the person you stab. And so that's not the kind of stab you really want to go to. Usually falls into the weak category. A two-dot stab, on the other hand, is going to hurt. No matter how good your position is on the board, losing two centers, and usually two centers back behind the lines where you're fighting, is going to put a crimp in your position. And if you can take those two centers and put yourself in position to take more centers, and if that person who you stabbed becomes the target of your neighbors and the people he was fighting so that you essentially end up dividing his centers between you, that can be a really good stab. Three dots. You should almost always take three dots if you're given the opportunity. It's such a massive swing in your favor that it's almost more useful to talk about the times when you shouldn't do it than when you should. If you are looking at the board and you're looking at the order sets that you've negotiated with your ally and you say, huh, if instead of doing what we talked about, I do X and Y and Z, I'll take three dots from him and I don't have to sacrifice my position on the front line, and I'm going to be able to, yeah, you should just do it. Put in, put in the orders for the stab. Um, and if you find yourself in a position, which you shouldn't do, but, you know, life comes at you fast, if you find yourself in a position where the person you are working with could take three dots from you, make sure you talk to them about it and explain to them why, in this particular instance, it's a really bad idea. Good reasons to not take three centers from someone are rare, but <clears throat> they mostly involve stalemate lines, and they mostly involve the opportunity to get a solo. It doesn't matter. If you stab somebody who's at nine centers and take them down to six, so at the same time you go from six to nine, if a 12 center power is going to be able to eat the other six dots, you still lose to a solo, and it doesn't matter how good your stab was. You know, a loss is a loss is a loss. All of these things should be what's in your mind as you're thinking about, should I stab my ally? The last thing I want to talk about when valuing stabs is the timing of the stab. A stab in the spring is a stab for position. You are moving into spaces that you didn't agree to move into so that you can take centers in the fall. And the reason why you might stab in the spring is because it gets you further and takes more from your opponent. The peril, of course, of a spring stab is it gives the entire board an opportunity to react to what you are doing. And 
that can often work very much against you because the person you are stabbing now has a chance to go to the people he was fighting and say, look, uh, I'm getting stabbed. You need to stop fighting me. Need, I'm going to back off from you. Don't come running in on me. And often savvy players are going to let them do that. They'll let them take a step back and defend themselves so that you and the person you are stabbing get entangled and then they can move forward while you're fighting. So a spring stab is harder to pull off effectively, but can have greater rewards if you can do it. The fall stab is the classic stab where you just dive for dots. And instead of moving your pieces forward against your common enemies, you're running them into your former ally. Uh, these are the stabs that most often can be brutal because they are such a surprise. Um, often, if you are moving through your uh, partner's homeland, if you're France and you're working with Germany and you've, they've agreed to allow you to transit through Munich, um, this is a, a, a really risky proposition. Similarly, with uh, Austria or Italy or any of those powers where you might be as an ally moving through the neighborhood on your way to the front lines, that's when you have to look at it and say, mm, is this really the moment when I want to not move from Venice to Piedmont, but instead maybe from Venice to Rome and follow it up? High risk, high reward. Stabbing in the winter with a build is the hardest to pull off of all, because obviously it's a zero dot stab in that moment. Now, that being said, if you stab in a way that is plausibly deniable, then really it's a slow stab, and you're moving your units in a way that's going to let you take the spring fall uh, uh, path to getting the maximum reward. But saying that you stabbed somebody in the winter with a build is something that happens much more commonly in the very beginning of the game. Uh, if you are England, and you're working with France, and you built Fleet London at the same time that they built Fleet Marseille, they might see that as a stab. Now, you might say, ah, oh, that wasn't a stab, and they'd be like, well, why didn't you build in Eddie? And you'd be like, because you might have built in Brest? And so it's kind of a semi-stab, and then it really depends on what you do with it. Um, if you're Austria, and you build Fleet Trieste, and you're working with Italy, that's probably a stab. And you'd better be prepared to follow that up with armies uh, heading into the boot to make it stick. So, uh, in ranked in order of my personal preference, fall is the best time to stab. You go for the dots, but it is the, uh, it's the one that you have to be in position for, and so it's easier to anticipate, and having a stab blocked is terrible. You don't want that to happen. You want them to be unsuspecting when you go for it. A spring stab sets you up harder to execute because of the diplomacy and the negotiation aspect of it, but usually will net you a couple of dots if you do it correctly. And the winter stab is very situational. It can work, it can be something that you can do, but it's very much the hardest thing to pull off as a stab because they see it coming and you get no rewards for two full moves. That's my thoughts on how to value stabs. If you agree with me, let me know in the comments. If you disagree with me and have a different way that you value stabs yourself, go ahead and put that in there too. Give the video a like if you enjoyed this. Subscribe to my channel to get more diplomacy videos. And if you really like what I'm doing, you can give me your support on Patreon. Until next time, I'm Chris Martin, and I'll stab you soon.